everyone, Nefertiti here. So my human hands look a little boring. Let's change that up. Boom! Woohoo! Look at that! Aren't these big, fantastic, wonderful bappers? The beans are so shiny, and I can teach you how to make some too, so you can snuggle them all day. Ready? Let's go ahead and get into it. Alrighty. So in order to convert our human hands into big, chunky paws, we first have to go over one major important thing, which is creating our pattern. This is my basic pattern piece. You can see that I usually combine my ring and middle fingers together in order to give that four-fingered look. Now, my pattern is a little bit odd, and I won't be posting it by itself, but hopefully you'll be able to take some inspiration from it just by looking at this, as well as listening to the explanation that I'll give you in just a moment. All of these pieces come together to create a beautiful three-dimensional pattern. Granted, it is going to take some time getting used to how to do this, so don't get frustrated if it doesn't turn out quite the way you want it right at first. This is definitely a practice makes perfect kind of project. Whew, wasn't that some alliteration. But before we get into actually making our patterns, allow me to explain a little bit about how they work. Now, this main shape that you see on screen now, this is the primary paw. This is where your human hand will sit, with the paw pad being right about the center of your palm. Now, most fursuit paws have four fingers, and it is kind of difficult to figure out how you're going to transform five skinny human fingers into four big chunky paw fingers. The secret to doing that lies in this process. This is the pattern for the top of the paw finger. Now, these little blue dashes here are what are known as darts. Darts have to be created in some fabric in order to create this rounded, concave shape. In other words, by adding this little slit in the material, when we sew it together, it forces it into a round shape. In order to give my particular paws very defined fingers, I prefer to use two separate darts. Now you'll notice that the top part of the pattern looks a little bit different from the bottom. This is perfectly normal. The reason why I do this is so that the front of the finger is very nice and rounded and soft, and the back end has a nice hard edge, which makes it a lot easier to attach it to the actual fabric of the hand. Be sure you include seam allowance in all of your pattern pieces when you're working with them like this. Don't worry about the paw pad parts right now. We'll get into that later. The next piece is pretty straightforward and simple. This is the bottom of the finger. Now with all of these pieces, you do want to keep in mind which direction your fur is going to point. Like most animals in nature, the fur will point away from the head. So in the case of paws, your fur fibers will always point towards your fingertips. This is super important to keep in mind because it can make your suit look extra super beautiful if you follow these basic instructions. Now something you'll see by looking at this pattern is that the bottom fingers are simply duplicated. Simple enough, right? Well, you don't exactly want your fingers looking at like they're splayed out. You kind of want them to seem a little bit more relaxed and only spread out like that when you so choose to do so. Now, in order to achieve that, you kind of have to modify your original pattern. I'll explain this a little bit more when I cut out my pieces so that you can better understand it, but I'll kind of roughly explain it here. If you take the edge of the fingertip like this and fold it at an angle so that it matches up with the side of the pattern, and then cut that piece, you'll see that it will fit perfectly while still keeping its fingertip shape. Of course, you'll have to duplicate this with the top half of the fingers as well, so don't forget to mark that down. Keep everything measured, keep everything symmetrical, and you'd be surprised how amazing of a difference this can really make. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump right back into that tutorial. Okay, next, of course, we're gonna need our fur. I have this beautiful inky blue fur that I picked up from Howell Fabric. It's also important to note your fur direction. I always try to lay it down facing away from me because I know the fibers will point that direction. Then take any kind of washable chalk, you can either use Taylor's chalk or washable sidewalk chalk, they both work just as fine, and then trace all your pieces. If you're making two paws, you'll need four of your main hand piece, and here's the big whopper. You will need eight of each finger, which is an oofer.
make sure you include seam allowance when tracing out your pieces. Now, because I hand sew a good portion of my paws, I personally prefer to measure out just about, I want to say like one fourth to maybe like one third of an inch for seam allowance, which is just enough for me. Holy smoke roonies would you look at how many pieces is required in order to make one set of paws. Ever wonder why they cost so much? Well, this is one part of many. Now you have to cut out each of the pieces of fur. Something very important to keep in mind here is that you do not want to cut the fur as if you're just chopping it. You want to very gently cut only the backing of the fur. Now once you have all of your fingertips cut out, you're going to do something a little bit neat to kind of speed up this process. If you lay down the fur and take your razor, which I just have a basic pet razor, set it to about the 2.0 width and just gently shave over these pieces, going with the grain. Now this technique I cannot claim for my own because I did see somebody else do it first, so I'll give credit where credit is due. This is a technique that I picked up from Mothsicles. Well, I believe now they're Mothsicle suits on Instagram, but they have absolutely amazing work and you should seriously check them out and consider following them. They post all kinds of awesome tutorials and tips, and they're even on TikTok, so you can give them a follow there too. Definitely recommend this awesome maker because they gave me the biggest lifesaver. By shaving down your pieces like this before you cut out the individual fingertips, it makes sure that all your fur fibers are the same length, which saves a boatload of trimming time later on in the future when you end up connecting all the pieces. Trust me, bless this method, it works so well. Continue to repeat this with all your other fingertip pieces. It's going to take some time, so make sure you go slow and just work gently. You don't want to overcut your fibers. You can also use a blade guard for your razor if need be. Once you get the primary finger pieces shaved, then of course you can cut each one out. Just snip and snip and snip and snip, 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 snip all the little pieces. Once you get all of the fingertip pieces cut out, you then have to focus on the larger pieces. Now up until this point, these are still at the full length of the fiber. I haven't shaved it down at all, but you don't want to bury your hands in everything, so in order to make them show up a little bit better, I always shave down the palm of the hand. This is the same cut length that I used for the fingertips, 
so I very carefully carve out where the palm of the hand would be, keeping in mind to still leave some of the arm sleeve itself there. Collect up all that beautiful floof because just like any other maker, I brush my floor with my de-slicker because I guess it works. <gasps> Look at the pile of floof! Next, we have to sew together the little dart for the underside of the hand. This is personal preference, and I'm not sure it's something I'd recommend for everybody because I have very scrawny little wrists. So when I fold in these pieces, I make sure that I poke all my little fur fibers inside. Swoosh, let's go. We need to do the same thing with the darts on the fingertips. There will be two of these ones. There's the front part of the finger, which is where the very front fingertip will be. And then there's another little one that we have to do in order to create that nice rounded top shape. Make sure you tuck all those fibers in and pin everything in place so it stays. These little super clips I've picked up are fantastic for this, and they're so much easier to use than sewing pins. With all of our little buddies all pinned, it's now time to move to the sewing machine. Now, for these little parts right here, because I don't trust my machine not to completely eat it, I prefer to hand sew this portion. Unfortunately, the camera decided that it wasn't going to focus, and it was way too bright in the room to be able to see that the camera wasn't focused, so I apologize, but I'm just using the blanket stitch here. It's super duper easy, I've posted a video of it on my TikTok, so you can go check that out if you want, or you can just type in blanket stitch tutorial and learn it here on YouTube. Very versatile stitch, definitely recommend it for almost all your projects. You can do everything by hand, but having a sewing machine definitely speeds up the whole process significantly. So for most of this, I will use my sewing machine. I also trim down the seam allowance once it's sewn up, so that way it's a little less bulky on the inside. Then it's simply a matter of lining up all my finger pieces. Starting with the center, because it tends to be the most difficult for me to sew, I do one finger at a time, sewing them in place, waiting till I get to the end of it, attaching the second finger, and then continuing along. It's basically wash, rinse, and repeat at this point. Now with that all done, we're almost ready to attach the top and bottom half. However, there is one super duper important part that we have to keep in mind in order to make these paws. Now you may be noticing that we're missing something vital. The paw pads! I wanted these pads to be very big and fluffy, so I went around my original outline and made it a bit wider. I wanted to fill in this whole huge space. And of course, Winza's signature heart paw pads. With this in mind, I duplicate it and then select my material, which is this absolute retina searing neon pink. It is so pink, even with the color correction, you still can't tell how pink it is. It's fantastic. 
Lay the paw pad down first side, making sure that the side you want showing for the paw pad is on the opposite side as well. So basically you're creating a sandwich, but rather than putting the good side to the good side, you put the good side to the back side, if that makes any sense. Pin everything in place, and then we're ready to sew. I just use a straight stitch on my sewing machine for this, making sure that the bottom thread is set to whatever color I want to show. Because when you're using a sewing machine, your bottom bobbin will always be what shows up when you're sewing something inside out. Kinda neat, huh? I didn't know this till just recently, and trust me, I wish I'd learned it earlier. Carefully sew your way around each one of the paw pads, following your nice little lines that you drew earlier. Look how pretty! Eee! Go ahead and repeat this with the fingertips as well. This sewn-in method of paw pads is something that I recently picked up, and I find that it works really well for the way that I make paws, but there are other methods out there as well, such as the applique method, which is most commonly used for silicone paw pads. If this is something you'd like to see a tutorial on, let me know! Once you have your beautiful paw pads all nice and sewn in, we're ready to cut them out and free them from the fabric. You need to very, very carefully take your scissors and cut as close to your stitching as possible without cutting the stitches, but still cutting away all the excess. Now, this is very tricky, and it does take some practice getting used to. It took me a couple test tries before I finally figured it out. But you'll find that it makes these absolutely beautiful clean edges, and it just looks so pretty. Look how pretty! Ah! <laughs> And look at that! Lots of pretty paw pads! But unfortunately these pads are looking a little bit flat. I think we need to show them some love. And the best way to do that is to stuff them. Take a nice pair of sharp scissors and very carefully cut a small hole into the back of this fabric. This is why it's super important to sew these pieces on really nice and tight so that you have the ability to do this. With your new little pocket created, you're going to take some polyfill. This is just basic light stuffing that's used in pillows, it's used in plushies, and I have a surplus of it. You can make it softer and squishier by ripping up the fibers and spreading them apart. Look at that big old ball of fluff. Start by pressing the pieces in, and just work your way around until it reaches your desired level of poofiness. Depending on the material you used, you can either have moderately soft paw pads, or you can have ginormous squishy bappers. Spandex is a huge culprit for this one. Once you've reached your desired poofiness, it's time to seal up this little hole so that stuffing can't escape. I usually prefer to use a blanket stitch when doing this so that I know it's extra, extra secure. Again, to see the blanket stitch more closely, I recommend looking up a tutorial for it. 
I've posted a couple in the past, but it's not exactly something that I go over in depth for several reasons. The biggest being that my camera hates me and I can't seem to get a good angle on it. But there's lots of great tutorials out there. I'll leave a couple links down in the description for all of the materials as well as some good videos that I'd recommend brushing up on in order to do a project like this more efficiently. Once you've nicely sealed all the fluff inside to your beautiful squishiness, it's time to move on to all the other fingers because we can't just have one nice puffy pad, we need all the puffy pads. Make sure you check the stuffiness every so often to see if you need more or less. I have had times where I overstuff the paw pads and I do have to take some out. With all your edges sealed, the paws are stuffed, it's time to start connecting all the pieces. This means taking the top and bottom halves and putting them together. Whenever you sew anything, you always sew it inside out. It's kind of a funky process that takes some getting used to. Now, you notice that the top half of my pattern is a little bit wider than the bottom. This is partially a personal error. When I adjusted my pattern, the last time I had used it was for somebody who has extra large hands and I have petite little itty bitty hands. I forgot to change the pattern back. So I end up having to fix this in the future, and that's why my paws kind of change shape halfway through, but my best advice is to follow the pattern instructions that I posted earlier on in the video. That will give you the best result. Once everything's all pinned, it's time to sew. And sew, and sew, and sew. After oodles and oodles of sewing, I managed to fully hand sew the entire exterior of my paws. With the good sides inside, we do have to figure out how to make it wearable so that it's comfortable and still fluffy. That is where this material comes in. You can use any kind of cotton fabric or lycra to line the inside of a paw. I personally prefer using cotton fabrics or batik, which is what this is, because it wicks away the sweat from your hands, and most times they have really pretty patterns that you can use to theme the insides if you're just feeling a little bit extra. You could always just go for basic black and white, but this is what I like to do. Now when you're tracing the pattern here for your hands, do bear in mind that you have four fingers that are technically five, so you have to compensate for that by using extra space. I have a pattern that I specifically made just for the interiors of my paws because it speeds it all up. You can always do this individually by hand every single time, but I find it's just easier to have a pattern that's like a one size fits all that I then trim to fit whoever the wearer is. Boy, even when I wrote that part of the script, that was still very confusing. <laughs> I hope it comes across clear enough for you. Sew up the lining. Keep in mind that when you're sewing it together, you have to leave room to cut everything out. So don't sew too close together for your edges.
and then trim the edges. Once you've fully sewed your liner, it's time to attach it to the paw. I like to pin everything in place and then hand sew at a couple anchor points, such as the fingertips, the wrist, the back of the hand, and in between each finger. I know that this provides a very secure connection. And now we begin the tiresome process of turning everything inside out. I find it's a lot easier if you try and squish the fingers in first so that you're not having to fight with them later on. But this is still a very frustrating process that does take lots of getting used to and lots of struggling. Hope you got good hand muscles. Once you've managed to wriggle everything inside out, you can see that your paw is starting to come together. But those fingers are looking awfully flat, so let's go ahead and stuff them to make the signature puffy paw. This is done simply by going on the top half of your paw here, going on top of the liner, and just fluffing those fingertips out with a bunch of polyfill. Try not to overstuff them because otherwise it'll kind of squish your fingers on the inside and it'll make it very uncomfortable to wear. Once all the fingers are stuffed, I like to add just a little bit extra right to the top of the hand. I find this helps it keep its shape and prevents it from deforming a little bit. This is totally optional though. With all the good fluff and stuff, open up the lining and slip your hand inside for a test fit. See if you can wiggle your fingers into the correct positions and if you have a good amount of dexterity. You should be able to move each individual finger with ease. Fantastically squishy! But now we have to do something about this exposed liner. Don't worry, that's easy enough to fix. This is called bias binding strips, or binding tape. You can find it at most craft and hobby stores, and it does take some getting used to to learn how to use. An alternative is a strip of fleece. The only downside to using fleece is that of course it will trap heat and your wrists will get a little bit warm, but other than that, fleece works just as fine. Bias is just a little bit more professional and pretty looking. The whole purpose of adding this is to seal the liner, trap all the fluff and stuff, and just add a nice pretty finished edge to the paw. It makes it look so much more professional. But with everything pinned, it's now time for us to put it on the sewing machine and enter Anxiety Simulator! I've not stabbed my finger with the sewing machine quite yet, so I think I'm doing good. Once 
once you finish sewing one half of the bias, you have to sort of flip it over and wrap it around the edge, pin it in place, and then sew around that exterior edge one more time. For a more in-depth tutorial on this, I recommend checking out Mugiwara Cosplay. They have amazing tutorials and they're where I first learned how to pick up this bias binding tape. I definitely recommend checking their channel out. It's loaded to the brim with fantastic tutorials. Once the bias is all finished, you can slip it on and give it a test fit. Look at how pretty and clean! And now it's time to add the claws. If you don't want them, just skip this step and move on. But I personally like to add claws to my hand paws. I just think it looks fantastic. The easiest way to do this is to create this sort of spade-like shape that then gets folded in half and the top is sewn. This is really easy, and it saves a lot of sewing time. You just have to make a whole bunch of them. Since I have eight fingers, I'll make sure that I make eight claws to go with them. Sew the top together, turn them inside out, and then stuff them full of fluff. I personally use fleece on majority of my claws, but you can also use materials like vinyl or any kind of other material you can think of. Get creative. I wanted these paws to be soft and squishy. The end was simply ladder stitched, and now I'm doing the same kind of ladder stitch to sew it onto the paw itself. To bury the end of your thread, simply shove it through the claw, pull it tight, and then snip it off. The end will retreat back into the claw and hide it. Look at that! Yee! And just like that, you've made some beautifully fantastic puffy paws! I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you did, consider leaving a like or a comment below to let me know. If you have any other tutorial requests you'd like to see, be sure and leave them as well. Maybe I'll do them too. But anyways, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. Ta-ta! I love being able to give back to the community and create tutorials like this, but they do take time to edit and this video alone took me almost five days just to film. So if you'd like to support me a step further, consider checking out my Patreon. Just $1 a month gets you on this screen and helps me out with day-to-day -day living. If you're feeling generous, you could always donate a little bit more and get access to some awesome perks. I give out free ref sheets every month, bases, exclusive work in progress photos, one-on-one -on -one chats, direct access to my Discord server, and if you get a high enough tier, you can even get free artwork from me each month. How neat is that? A big thank you to all my wonderful bronze patrons. You guys are super duper awesome and I greatly appreciate your support. And of course, my silver patrons, Star Hopper, Volt the Duchy, Osmium Dragon, and Draxfer. Thank you guys for your outstanding silver tier support. I also would like to thank my gold patron, Sea Noodles. You're such a beautiful person and I just love your exuberant personality and just how energetic you always are in your videos. Thank you so much for your extended support. And I have to give an absolutely immense thank you to Small Red Fox, who is at my Platinum Support tier. Seriously, whenever I see your name and whenever we chat, you always bring a smile to my face and I feel like we're just such fantastic friends. It's amazing how little connections and talking can lead to fantastic and wonderful friendships. And I definitely have to thank you for that because it's one thing to be my friend, and then to support me is another, and I cannot thank you enough for that. Seriously, thank you so, so much for your outstanding and amazing support. 
If you'd like to join all these most wonderful and amazing people, please click the link in the description or follow it on screen now. I would greatly appreciate your support, but it's not required. I also absolutely love to feature fan art, such as this beautiful piece here from Lizar7. Thank you so much. When I first saw this in my inbox, I was just jaw to the floor, blown away. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but anyways, I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day and a wonderful life.